city, the idea is the children on one side of that barrier, that's a rope attached to uh, two cribs with a sheet thrown over it, are trying to get all the soft objects to the other side. But the people over there are trying to get all your objects back here. So it's a recipe for controlled chaos. Lots of opportunity to practice throwing back and forth and back and forth. And what are they throwing, everybody? Socks. Yes, rolled socks. Cheap, readily available, just dump it off the sock drawer, find something to do with those singletons left after the laundry, uh, put out an all call to parents, because children are always out growing their socks, and ask them to bring in socks. And so you get soft fabric, rolled <coughs> socks, for you know very little money, if people just can do donate them, and then you've got lots of objects for throwing. So this little boy in braids, is way too young to understand. Stand here, throw there, and you may have noticed he's wandering back and forth and back and forth, and that's fine because this is not about one team winning. It's about creating the environment that's going to prompt children to practice throwing. Yeah, yeah good. Yeah, because he's still throwing, just not, you know, with the concept of being on a team. Um, and I, I don't want somebody to win because, of course, when you create winners, you create losers. And our idea is to help everybody enjoy physical activity, not to start saying, oh, you're a really good mover and you're not. You know, that's not our mission. I found if there's at least five objects to throw per child, then it, you don't get a winner because no matter how many you throw, you look down, there's still more to throw. So having lots of objects to throw helps make this work really well. And we'll do that activity over here a little bit later. Uh, the next ones, there's four video clips that I'd like to show that all use the same piece of equipment. And that's going to be familiar to those of you who were here last time. I heard you say you had the photo on the phone. All right. Let's see if you can figure out what this piece of equipment is. Yes, it's pantyhose. And what's inside? A balloon. Uh, it's a balloon. It's a punch ball balloon. So it's very lightweight, and because it's tethered, that means that children get many opportunities to kick over and over and over again, because it always comes right back to them. And in a little while, we'll use this as well, and I'll explain more about how it's made. Um, but because it's very lightweight, because it's a balloon, if it comes back and hits a child, no tears. They're not learning how to be afraid of the ball. And a child can hold it for another child, or that's my husband's legs there, you know, you can hold it out like this, or you can suspend it, and I'll go through in a little bit about how it's suspended, uh, so the children can all be lined up and have lots of chances to kick. And then to keep it novel, you see the paper with the word white there? That's a target they can hit toward, or I've just brought out a two liter bottle with construction paper around it because children like bright colors. And now that's like a bowling pin. She's trying to kick the balloon so it knocks over the, uh, the two liter bottle. And then she has these karate kicks or something. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what they are. I assume they don't know what they are. <laughs> but I love that because it reminds us that this is the age of exploration and experimentation. My philosophy is this is not the time to say, <clears throat> when you contact that soccer ball to kick it into the goal, I want to see the foot plant next to it, contact on your instep, <laughs> follow through diagonally across your body, and into the goal. That's good for adults. That's good for older children. I have a real problem with some well-intending people who take adult sports and force them on children who are nowhere near developed and ready to play those sports. So giving children lots of opportunities to practice kicking in a wide variety of ways helps them learn how their body moves and they're likely, when it's time, to learn how to kick for soccer toward goal or dribbling in a, more easily because they've had this base of experience moving in many different ways. Being tethered really helps out because if a ball is loose, and you know, if you work with toddlers, imagine the toddler coming up and they kick the ball and then they want to go pick up the ball and what happens? They just keep <laughs> kicking it and kicking it and kicking it. 
sort of the way I play tennis. You spend all your time chasing the ball instead of actually getting to kick it. But when it's tethered, it comes back to them right away so they can practice kicking over and over and over again. High rates of success, high rates of practice, and it works out just fine. You can take the same setup and hoist the um, balloon with the pantyhose up a little higher, and now we're practicing punching or eye hand coordination. <laughs> So they're doing it kind of like tether ball, one on each side, tapping it back and forth to each other. You know, like saying, that's a meatball. <laughs> or you can do it individually like this, and the pantyhose have a little bit of spring to it, makes it kind of fun to see how it bounces. And here, it's almost a lead up to volleyball, where she's contacting it. It's, this is not good for practicing catching in terms of having a loose ball, because it's very light, it's hard to control. But it's great as a lead up to catching, as you saw, saw the two children initially do. So they're batting it to each other and beginning to get that idea, get your hands in position behind the ball when it comes to you. So it's good for eye-hand coordination. And here's yet another variation. So we're working on easy striking here. And what are they using to strike the balloon? Yes, pool noodles. So it's a pool noodle that's been cut in half, so it's, you know, generally resembles a bat and it's out of foam. So if a child accidentally, or not so accidentally, hits another child with it, it's foam. You may still have to deal with the behavior, but at least you're not dealing with the goose egg and the behavior. <laughs> so it, it's much safer. Works just fine. And we can control how close the children are to each other. You know, you need some kind of space. If you're gonna be uh, batting or striking, then you gotta have a bit of space. But as adults, we can control that. Because if I were to suspend the rope here from one wall to the next, I'd drop one balloon here, and then I'd leave some distance and drop another here, and leave some distance and drop another here, and so forth. So I'm not spending my time saying, no, no, get away, get away. I've created the environment that means the children will be apart from each other, because they're naturally going to go to the balloons to strike. I uh, just want to talk about how this is suspended because I don't recommend what we've got going here. You see it's a PVC pipe that it's suspended from. That's the hard way of doing it. We were in a situation where uh, what we would have preferred was putting an eye bolt in people's walls and then suspending this and we thought well they'll let us in the door once and after that they'll say no you're putting holes in my walls so we've got to come up with a different way and that's where we use the PVC piping that could be disassembled put in our car and drive to the next place to get the video footage and so forth but if you're in a permanent situation much better is take an eye bolt that's this piece of hardware and sink it into the stud on the wall and then either straight across, or in this case, I'd probably go diagonally because this is a huge room. And so, and I hold over there, and then take this piece of hardware, a bolt snap, that fits over that. And so snap, and then at that end snap, and then take a dedicated piece of rope, so a clothesline rope, not something that's going to be stretchy, and tie it nice and tight so when it's snapped at both ends, it's really taut. And then don't untie it. Just dedicate that rope. And so you put this away. Next time you want to do it, it is very simple. It's just snap, snap, and you're good to go. Ideally, there'd be an eye bolt at waist level for the kicking, because it's a short pendulum. You can get a lot of people in that space for kicking. And another where the adults can reach it, but it's overhead for the children. And that would be for the punching and the striking, and so forth. How about if you're outside? Well, if you've got like a playground uh, swing set support or a tree, then take a bungee cord, wrap it around that, and then this snaps 
into the bungee cord, excuse me, <laughs> uh, so that you don't have to worry about drilling holes in the trees or trying to get a bolt into the frame of a playground piece of equipment. Because the bungee cord will just be what you can snap this in. So that makes it pretty easy for setting up. Uh, getting permission to put eye bolts into the wall can take a while. In one setting, it took me three months before I got permission to do that. But then they were set up and they still use that piece of that, that arrangement. Uh, so talk to your directors, see if you can get permission to, to put the bolts in the wall, and then you can do a whole lot of additional activities. I'm going to leave the active play video here and go to a different one. This is a different menu. So most of these activities are described in the book, but these videos are not in the book. And this is uh, going to show, and it's a special children's center where half the children you see in this video have special needs. Others are typically developing. And this shows how the same activity can be done in a classroom setting. So we moved the tables that were in the middle of the room and strung this between the door frame and the window frame. <coughs> so the ropes across. You see here we'd smartened up. We realized if we have it waist high, we can get more people in the same space kicking because the pendulum of the kick the, is not as long. So the whole class is there practicing kicking in their classroom and getting lots of practice at kicking. And then we hoist up higher, so now we're practicing the punching, or the eye-hand coordination. Now this little girl has a lot of sensory issues, and, and so that's a therapist who's giving her some deep pressure to help her calm down. This guy is non-stop movement. I imagine you have his brother in your program. <laughs> this is something that they can do. They need to move. Let's give them appropriate ways that are not going to be harmful to themselves or others to move. And this girl that has the prosthesis instead of the right arm uh, is also participating. We learned after we'd done this filming that this was one of, I think it was the third day she'd ever worn the prosthesis. And yeah, and she looks like she's maybe four years old. And so up until this point, it had just hung on her side because she'd gone through her whole life without anything for her right arm. And so afterwards, they were really excited because a moment ago, you saw her grab the balloon with both arms. And that was one of the very first times she'd used the prosthesis in a functional way. So we're really excited to see that she was now starting to, because she can't hold the balloon if you don't have both hands on it. So, so let's us try that. Uh, if you would, leave your things there. If you have any open containers, try to protect them. And let's play, keep the blue in the air. So if we have a circle of about 10 people here, a circle of another 10 people or so here, and another circle of about 